everyone, this is Cyrus De Leon from Plan International Philippines. And with me is Catherine Gambier of Women's Refugee Commission, our research partner for this study, which we call Understanding the Drivers of Child Marriage in Emergencies. The research covers three countries, and the first to implement is the Philippines. We'll share more about this experience. So we'd like to begin by sharing a story from an adolescent girl from the province of Maguindanao, and it says, I was in my third year in high school when I stopped schooling because my parents wanted me to marry my cousin. People told me that I'm already married, so I should find livelihood instead. Because we were arranged, we weren't close and wouldn't talk to each other at first. It was hard. I was very young and didn't know how to earn a living. I felt like I was too young when I married. I was ashamed. I married early against my will, but if I did not obey, there would probably be conflict between our families. So this is just one of the stories we have gathered from 2,000 plus respondents, most of whom are girls who may have a similar experience. So please keep that story in mind. And why were we interested in gathering such stories? Let me quickly share the objectives of the research. So the study aims to understand the drivers of child early and forced marriage, look at the needs and priorities of girls, and explore adolescent programming in humanitarian settings. Ultimately, findings and data evidence will be used to develop a tailored, girl-led, and community-grounded humanitarian program model for child marriage prevention and response. The research took on a participatory mixed methods approach, and one of the methods used was SenseMaker. We will focus on this method as it is new to us. It's very innovative, and we want to share that with you. So SenseMaker is a narrative-based research methodology that allows respondents to give meaning to their stories through responding to a series of pre-identified questions or story prompts. It is administered through a tablet device and encourages a more interactive interface between the enumerator and the respondent. The methodology includes the conduct of a co-design and co-analysis session or workshops with community members and adolescent girls themselves to contribute to the tool development and analysis of findings. So the interview begins with a story prompt, just one question, and this is what we asked. Share a story of what, it, what it's like for young girls and boys to live here in your community or municipality. And based on this question, the respondent will then share a story. Let's look back on the story we read from the earlier slide. So imagine that was the response. This will then be followed by a series of questions that will encourage the respondent to further reflect on her initial story. And the follow-up question would be, Based on your story, who or what was responsible for what happened? So the story on the left is the same story we had. And the tablet screen will be showing this triangle or triad, and the corners will correspond with three elements. So you will see there myself and the, or the individual, people's mindsets, and people with power and authority. The respondent will be asked to place a bubble or a dot within the triangle based on how strongly she feels each element is reflective of her story. So now a quick exercise. If you were to choose, what would you think would be the response? Based on the story, what or who would you say would be responsible for the circumstances laid out in the story? I'll give you a few seconds to think about your answer. And now I'll show you the actual responses we gathered. The dots represent all the responses. So one dot is one respondent. And we will see here that respondents have actually said that it is themselves or the individual who was responsible for what happened in the story. In fact, it was 57% of the respondents. So do you find that interesting or surprising? And what does this say about girls' worldview and how may this affect their life? So this just gives us the idea of the process we've undergone in the SenseMaker data collection. Now, Catherine will share some of the initial emerging themes from the data that we already have. Over to you. Thanks, Iraz. I'm going to discuss some of our emerging findings from SenseMaker in the Philippines, but want to note that this is just a snapshot of the depth and complexity of our emerging findings. First, although the underlying causes of child marriage remain consistent, the contextual drivers differ across provinces, reflecting their diverse populations and nature of the crisis, such as natural, natural hazard, conflict, displacement, or a combination of those. Some of these drivers include controlling adolescent sexuality, which is manifested as preserving family honor, and resolving clan feud and violence. We also explore the differences in child marriage decision-making pathways between love marriages and arranged marriages, 
And we're learning that families, especially mothers, are involved in marriage decisions. Finally, we learned that there is a sense of duty, both at the individual and community level, as well as at the society level, to marry. We've experienced challenges, as I'm sure many of you have due to COVID-19. In the Philippines, we experienced delays in data collection and analysis. In the two other country contexts, Zimbabwe and a third to-be-determined refugee context, we had to push back our study launch dates. We're also adapting to the evolving COVID context. In the Philippines, we're discussing the impact of COVID-19 on child marriage practices during our upcoming co-analysis workshop with community members. For the other country context, we're adding new research questions, such as how has COVID impacted the decision-making pathways within households to enhance or mitigate risk of child marriage. We're also shifting to remote data collection and adapting our research methods as necessary. Findings from these latter studies will help inform the development of child marriage programming in restricted environments that is part of our broader child marriage and emergencies program model. In terms of next steps, we are adapting our research methods and tools to the COVID-19 context. We will complete data collection in two countries by the end of 2021. In spring 2021, we will facilitate co-analysis workshops and or program validation workshops with community members and other key stakeholders in each context. Finally, in fall 2021, we will use the findings from the three studies to finalize and launch the global humanitarian program model for child marriage prevention and response that is tailored, girl-led, and community-grounded. So stay tuned. Thanks so much.